Hey, welcome formally everyone uh, for the session today. So uh, as we have been doing uh, this series of uh, talks uh, with uh, different experts in different fields, we did a, a session on medical science uh, last week. We also did a session on uh, architecture. Uh, that was again last week. So continuing with the series today, we are taking up an engineering course, engineering subject. So why this uh, particular series? I'll also explain the reason. Uh, typically post uh, the JE, that means whenever the successful candidates go for their counseling, uh, whether it is after JE advance for IITs or for the NITs or other colleges, there is a lot of confusion about different subjects, different courses, what they are going to offer, what are future prospects, uh, and other other things, other information related to that course. Uh, typically, what I have observed is, uh, and it was uh, the case when we were writing JE and we qualified and we were doing counseling, and till today also the common notion is uh, people mm -hmm. whatever is the uh, common trend of people picking up one particular branch according to their ranks is still prevalent so it has not uh, you know uh, so that time also i remember i was i was not going for chemical engineering thinking that chemical engineering is all about chemi chemistry and somehow i i did not want to pursue a course where some bit of chemistry was involved and that particular uh, pre notions or pre biases actually let me choose something else uh, so hence the there are you know lots of confusions lots of questions around this particular thing and uh, it happens and we see this happening more intensely when we are counseling students when they are going for their first year courses so hence the hence what we have decided within ourselves and with the help of professor mrigant there at iit kharagpur we are going to have similar such you know sessions on different engineering streams as well which will throw some light on uh, uh, the course and the prospects of that particular course so that the students can be well aware of what exactly that course talks about so let me introduce professor mrigant sharad uh, who happens to be a college mate of uh, mine as well as akhil sir so we studied we got an opportunity to study together in iit kharagpur and he was in our, in the same hostel as well so that's something some connect which we share so he has received his btech and mtech from iit kharagpur and uh, he also did his uh, doctorate from uh, Purdue University, that, that is in electronics. Now, he has uh, more than 70 publications in international journals and conferences in the area of neuromorphic computing and related electronic hardware. He has been serving as a faculty at IIT Kharagpur in the Rajendra Mishra School of Engineering Entrepreneurship. And that's something which IIT uh, can be you know, uh, very proud of because lots of uh, uh, projects are going on in that uh, engineering um, entrepreneurship school. Now, Mrigant also co-founded Agnex Technologies Limited, uh, a startup working on IoT and AI-driven food quality analysis in 2017. So now you can uh, relate how uh, concepts of IoT and AI is being deployed in food uh, quality testing. And then he also led the development of several end-to-end -end solutions for a wide range of agricultural commodities. Currently, he is leading several entrepreneurship education initiatives at IIT Kharagpur and working as a mentor for several <laughs> early stage startups. So that is, uh, about, that is about Professor Mrigang Sharad. So uh, thanks Professor Sharad uh, for sparing out some time and uh, coming on uh, Centum Connect to enlighten our students. Thanks for that. Uh, I will also introduce uh, Moinak Ghosh and uh, he is a third year undergrad student at IIT Kharagpur. So he's also there with us today. Thanks Moinak for joining us. He is from electrical engineering department. He is passionate electronics uh, enthusiast and hobbyist and uh, has worked on several projects related to IoT, uh, wearables, robotics, and signal processing. So those students whom I know and who have we have been interacting in terms of hobby electronics, you can uh, find some bit of uh, you know guidance and uh, direction in whatever you are pursuing right now from Moina. His research interests are in very large scale integration that's related to chip design and uh, mixed signal circuit design and embedded systems development. So with those words, I welcome both uh, Brigant as well as Moinak uh, on, uh, uh, on this forum. And uh, I will now hand over to Professor Sharad, Brigant Sharad to uh, you know, uh, enlighten our students on uh, the particular topics that is electronics engineering as a career option. Professor Sharad. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Shar, sir. So I'm glad to connect with all of you through Centum Academy. And uh, uh, as uh, Tushar mentioned, he is my senior from IT Kharagpur. He is also in the same hall. So we have a long relationship and uh, we have been connected all throughout. 
and recently also uh, we have been discussing a lot of interesting ideas related to education technology so very glad to uh, connect with you uh, through this platform so uh, the topic today is uh, uh, electronics engineering and basically the pathways to electronic engineering why one should consider electronic engineering as a career and what are the opportunities within uh, this big domain so definitely it's it's challenging to cover all of this and along with a lot of interesting examples that you know uh, moina will also be presenting so all of this to cover within one one and a half hour is challenging and uh, somehow i have been able to prepare some material it's it's not the best that i can do right now but in limited time whatever i have prepared i will try to cover a overview so that uh, uh, those who are uh, pursuing uh, engineering preparation and also those uh, who are in early stage of their engineering education both of them can benefit both of them can get a, a good overview of uh, the domains in electronics engineering so uh, with that i can i can share my screen and i can uh, get started with the uh, discussion i i can just go through the big picture first and then i will uh, uh, i will uh, transfer the control to to shar for for the interaction so let me share my screen uh, yes sir. Uh, i have made you the co host so you can share the screen yeah so i will try to cover the uh, fundamental domains and after that i will look into some of the uh, advanced topics some of the emerging topics also especially iot uh, which is my area of interest as well and uh, one of the most popular emerging areas in electronics also so let me uh, start the screen sharing i hope all of you can see my screen yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, when we talk about electronics engineering uh, we have uh, we we have a lot of different application numerous different gadgets in mind that we uh, use in our daily life starting from our mobile phone computers many different gadgets like alexa and so on there are so many you know new gadgets emerging day after day there are so many medical devices uh, we are getting familiar with which operate on you know, very noble principles having wireless communication there are so many uh, so much penetration of these electronic devices uh, in our life that without them we can't imagine our day to day life these days so if i talk about electronics engineering uh, what all goes into it what are the major uh, segments that i can think of when i try to visualize the different uh, components of this domain so i have basically tried to uh, categorize it into four major segments of course you can sub categorize and you can have a bigger list but i am here trying to present a broad categorization so the first part of it deals with the electronic hardware so all the devices and gadgets they have electronic hardware right so you have seen the computer it has a motherboard it has many different ic's in it many different components in it wire connections into it so there are many different hardware components that go into building any electronics system so that is the first part electronic hardware and that is still is a big domain it has many many different uh, sub domain that i will try to cover with you quickly and uh, after that we have the information processing so what is the purpose of hardware the hardware is supposed to process and analyze information store information communicate information right so uh, what are the uh, what are the major tasks performed by the electronic hardware one is acquisition of information so when you are say recording a a video or taking an image the image sensor or the camera that is there that is recording the image that is sensing the image that is sensing the reflected light and basically converting into a specific format of image or video and it is storing the first thing is sensing the information likewise you may be doing audio recording you may be having a digital stethoscope which is basically recording your heartbeat so there are n number of sensors n number of inputs that we can think of like the touch pad of your screen of your uh, you know mobile phone that is also sensing your uh, touch right when you are creating pressure on the touch screen that is also sensing that pressure of your finger so there are many different kinds of input that are sensed so that is the first part acquisition of information acquisition of data acquisition of signals second part is once you have acquired the signal it has to be stored right so all of us are familiar with memory 
So when you talk about a computer's configuration, laptop's configuration, we talk about what is the memory, right? What is RAM? So what is the hard disk? So we talk about the memory. The second part is storing the information. So there also is a part of electronic hardware. So there is some electronic hardware in that system which is storing the data or the information. Next part is processing the information, right? So uh, if you have acquired certain data from the external world, generally there is some processing involved, like there is video compression, audio compression. Uh, so before you uh, do any further activity with the data, generally there is a lot of processing that goes in. There is some filtering also. All of you must have uh, used a lot of uh, camera related apps uh, where you are able to do some filtering, right? So you are able to filter the images. So there is a lot of such processing goes on. The audio also that we are using right now, for example, I may have a lot of background noise that may be there, but there is some processing technique in the software that I'm using that will filter out that noise. So whatever audio is going, that is also being processed. You are not hearing the raw audio. There is some intelligent algorithm running, which is processing this audio and giving you the refined noise free uh, voice so that you can interpret it better. So there is the signal processing, uh, information processing, which is the other part. The next part is the communication. Now, when you are, for example, right now I'm recording this video, that video is getting recorded on the cloud. So some server it is getting recorded. So this video is getting continuously transmitted to that server, right? So wirelessly, this entire video recording is going to the server. When you're talking on phone, your voice is going somewhere. You are going for video calls, your video is going somewhere, maybe to a server and from that server to the uh, recipient. So there is always a huge amount of communication going on between all these devices. So then again, there are the electronic devices sitting at the core, which are responsible for enabling all this communication, right? So there is an antenna, there is some uh, electronic device which is sending data out of that antenna. Again, the, on the other side, there is some device which is receiving and again, processing, decoding all that information. So again, there is a lot of electronic hardware responsible for enabling this powerful communication, right? So whatever uh, communication uh, you know, uh, you know, platforms we use, there are these electronic devices. And these communication platforms keep evolving, right? We have seen how we evolved from 2G, 3G, 4G. Now people are talking about 5G. So all these are again enabled by electronic hardware responsible for communication. So, uh, and of course there are other parts also like uh, that I have not mentioned here. Uh, the electronics hardware may also involve uh, many other sub components that I will deal with in the next slide. Uh, so in effect, I can say that, okay, these are are the three major components one is the hardware part second is the information uh, processing part and the third is the communication part now uh, a segment in electronics engineering uh, which people participate in or you know work in that is the cad tools cad means computer aided design so when we talk about engineering or designing of these electronic hardware or the communication processing system communication system so there are certain tools, computer aided design tools, with the help of these tools, we make all these designs. Again, there are a lot of uh, engineering processes which go into building these tools themselves, because ultimately these tools enable you to design electronics or develop electronics, hardware, software, communication, whatever. So then there's a lot of uh, people who choose to work on those CAD tools. Uh, and and uh, that becomes slightly closer to computer science domain because that has a lot of algorithms and techniques, how to basically help you design certain electronic hardware. So that is closer to, uh, I would say, computer science than electronics. Let me go ahead. And here, uh, I have tried to go deeper into the electronics yeah, hardware. Brigham, just, just, I just wanted to you know interrupt you, sorry for that. So I just, uh, the first question which is coming in my mind is, all these topics are studied in undergrad course as well, or these are specializations which have to be taken after your uh, graduation is done? So this can be, this is covered in the undergrad level as well. All these elements. Now, most are... of these things, most of these things are covered uh, at least as electives. So for example, the electronic hardware part and the data processing communication part, most of it is covered. Okay. Whenever you have an electronics and communication uh, course, these components will be covered. I see. Uh, now, of course, from institute to institute, there may be some variations. Like if there is a course on electrical engineering, Electrical and electronics are slightly different. If it is the electrical engineering course, you may have some more components added and some components taken out. Maybe there will be not much of communication. There will be less focus on the uh, CAD tools, uh, but more focused on some other things like 
electrical motors and electrical transmission lines and electricity management those kind of things so when you talk about electronics and communication definitely uh, the electronics part that means the hardware part and the communication part which is basically the networking the signal processing data processing all that uh, together that is very much uh, part of the ug curriculum also in the pg of course we have different specialization dealing with each of these i see okay fair please stand now uh, let me come to the hardware because when you talk about electronics the first thing that comes in our mind is electronics hardware so the term electronics also arises from the term electrons which basically uh, means which basically originates from the fact that all this uh, information processing that we are doing all this data processing all this number crunching all this communication that we are doing it is enabled by the movement of electrons that's why we call it electronics right so the first thing that comes in our mind is the electronic hardware which is basically the enabler of the entire information technology domain if you don't have electronic hardware you can't work on powerful algorithms you can't develop uh, artificial intelligence you can't have huge servers storing humongous amount of data you can't have such a high speed communication your broadband and optical communication none of that will work if you don't have the electronic hardware which is enabling this entire system right so at the core of it we have this electronic hardware now when we talk about the engineering study of electronic hardware again there are uh, different domain there are, here i have tried to show the hierarchy of electronic hardware starting from the bottom most level going towards the higher system level now here i uh, i can uh, i can tell you that there are of course variations in the curriculum some institutes may not focus so much on the lower levels that means the uh, the lower component level device level thing that i have shown over here so see the first picture that i have shown is of a nano scale transistor it's a, a 50 nanometer transistor so in your uh, class 11th and class 12th those who are preparing for je right now uh, and also those who are in early stage of their engineering studies uh, you must have studied some uh, basics of transistor that there is a some semiconductor switch made up of silicon and it basically has an on off kind of operation and with the help of that you can basically uh, do a lot of computation so switching logic right so you have might have heard about switching logic so all these algorithms that we do uh, you must have done some coding c coding or java coding or uh, you know python coding whatever so there are different kinds of program that you have learned ultimately you know that it translates into assembly language and then you know machine language ultimately it is just codes of zeros and one and these zeros and one causes switching in these transistors and ultimately the switching in these transistors is responsible for executing this code there are huge now billions of transistors in today's processors billions so these billions of transistors are switching on and off on and off uh, so when they are on they allow the electronic current to flow when they are off they uh, basically turn off the electronic current so in a transistor the current flows from source to drain here you can see the structure over here this is a nano scale transistor actual fabricated transistor in nanotechnology so there is a, a source side and a drain side and there is a gate so when you put a high voltage on the gate it basically allows electrons to flow from source to drain otherwise if you have zero voltage applied it blocks the flow so it's a simple switch so this is the uh, basically the basic component with the help of which all the other uh, other processing happens now uh, there has been lot of advancement lot of development uh, in the switch design right so starting from say the dimensions of few micrometers earlier when the transistor design started and the semiconductor chip design started these transistors were of the dimensions of few micrometer today uh, we have these transistors in the range of nanometer very recently ibm released its latest uh, transistors which are of 2 nanometer dimension so now these switches have become so small that you can uh, basically pack multi billions of these uh, transistors on a single chip and if you have more number of transistors in the same chip that simply means that you have more storage power more processing power because all these memory processor all these things are made up of these switches so if you have more number of uh, these tiny transistors on a chip you have more memory you have faster processing more processing you can execute much more powerful algorithms so uh, there is a lot of technology development that goes into designing these transistors how to make them better how to make them faster how to make them smaller how to basically uh, pack more of these in a semiconductor how to make them uh, stronger and more reliable right and, because you and, have to on top of it uh, you have to also take care of the costing part so it has to be uh, you know fast effective yeah. 
yeah the costing also so uh, you uh, all of us know that you know uh, the devices the cost have been actually going down if you look at the uh, device cost the ic cost uh, earlier in 90 or in early 2000s or 90 late 1990s the cost were you know few lakhs per computer today you are getting cheaper um, and so many mobile devices with much more capability much more power every uh, smartphone is a computer mini computer in your pocket with so much capability of processing so this has been enabled because now each the mobile phone is having tiny ics with these kind of very uh, tiny nano scale transistors which are enabling so much processing in a small area so that is the main fundamental reason why we are able to get so much processing power in small devices the scaling down of transistors making them smaller and smaller uh, working researching on this semiconductor technology uh, finding out the right kind of materials right kind of structures for these transistors so that is the first area where you know, a lot of engineering and science goes into picture now this area is uh, is more closer to i would say physics so it is more uh, science intensive right so it is having more pure science you need to uh, you know talk about quantum mechanics you need to understand the electrons flow how the semiconductor works what is the fundamental principle so those things are closer to pure science so it is closely interfacing with pure science physics chemistry material science etc so i hope you can understand uh, what kind of work it will involve if you are trying to be a technologist or basically a semiconductor technologist working on these kind of semiconductor nano devices this whole domain today is named as nanotechnology so in iit khadakpur we have a specialization in electronics which is called microelectronics but now of course uh, that microelectronics was coined when you know we were 25 years back but now today it has to be named as nanoelectronics because everything is on nano scale it started with micro scale but now it is nano so uh, this is the first now second part which is again a very big area is uh, before that you know there is a component design also so i talked to you about different kinds of sensors right uh, you may have temperature sensors humidity sensors you may have uh, like you talk about like your ac right so air conditioner you are setting up your temperature so how does it work ultimately it has an electronic uh, temperature sensor with the help of which it is able to control likewise many different gadgets have their own uh, sensors so your imager is also a sensor your microphone is also a sensor it is basically sensing your uh, pressure created by the voice when you are speaking something it is creating vibrations in the air it creating pressure variation in the air and that is sensed by some uh, pressure sensor and that converts it into electrical voltage so there is some specific sensor which is doing that job so there are many different kinds of sensors and designing those sensors with different kinds of material different kinds of semiconductor uh, material or other kinds of uh, materials that itself is a big area uh, imagers uh, if you talk about the cameras uh, i hope <laughs> you know how the cameras are built <clears throat> so cameras are also built of something called photo diode there are photo sensors so they are tiny photo sensors which convert light into electricity so if there is a light incident on it it produces some voltage or current proportional to the light intensity and when you have huge number of these diodes in an array you basically convert the entire intensity map into current per voltage map that's how the camera works so this is also like a sensor an array of sensors so there are a lot of research and development going on in these areas also how to get better sensor so you know that your camera today in the mobile phone it has reached such a high resolution starting from uh, you know few mbs today we have 20 mb camera more than that 30, 30 mb camera sitting in our uh, mobile phone so this tiny mobile phone is having this small dot on the uh, top and it is carrying such a powerful camera 20 megapixels of camera so this has been made possible because of all the development that has happened on the sensor front and then of course there are other things like power devices so you, whenever you have electronic device you need to provide power to them right so uh, uh, that happens with there are some special switches some, some special devices some batteries uh, you know about solar power also there are a lot of gadgets which are driven by solar power these days so there are a lot of different uh, components which come into the power management system which are responsible for regulating the power supply to the uh, hardware or the ic the chips and the motherboard that you have that is a power system power device so uh, and of course there are uh, passive devices like resistors capacitors etc which are also integral to your design many things are there on the uh, system that we have now within the component there is a special component that i have created separately over here which is ic design ic means integrated circuit so uh, 
you may have a circuit which is made up of resistor capacitor etc in 12th 11th class also i think you have uh, some components where you study about you know rc circuit rlc circuits and all kinds of calculations related to that that is also a circuit so you can make that kind of circuit you can buy some elect electrical resistors inductors capacitors and some switches transistors you can buy that and you can basically solder them and you can build a circuit out of it but when we talk about integrated circuits we are talking about chips the semiconductor chips which are there on your motherboard why do we call them integrated circuits because there are huge number of nano scale components integrated into this so these transistors that i talked about huge number of billions of these transistors are going into these chips to make different kinds of functional blocks so which are executing your algorithms or executing different kinds of functions so these are integrated circuits because they are integrated on the same piece of silicon they are integrated on the same chip now this chip design that itself is a huge area and uh, there are a lot of companies working on it so any product you take ultimately the core of it core of these electronic products are these chips because they are ultimately responsible for all the functionality so these in, in the motherboard when you open these black boxes that you see with so many pins they are the ics on integrated circuits or chips electronic chips which are responsible for all the processing all the communication all the algorithm execution data storage memory everything so now uh, designing these chips is another major area and uh, that also requires lot of domain expertise you need to understand the devices without understanding the devices transistors you can't make chips out of it you need to understand the circuits like when you are connecting certain transistors how to make this kind of circuits robust fast uh, and how to innovate on the circuit level so circuit design itself is a big area chip design itself is a big area and as systems are progressing more and more people are combining more functionality on the same chip so uh, earlier we used to have a separate chip for say uh, data converter or a to b converter uh, which is called an adc converter which which basically interfaces with the sensor there is a different chip for processor there is a different chip for memory there is a different chip for say image sensor uh, so there are different different chip in a standard processor or uh, sorry in a standard application but now there is a uh, there is a trend towards integrating all the functionality on a single chip so that uh, we have a system on chip so there are a uh, lot of companies which are working on soc so these systems are becoming huge bigger and bigger they are able to pack more and more transistors they are able to do uh, more and more functions on the same single piece of silicon what is the benefit of that so rather than integrating multiple chips you can just have very few chips and your system size can be smaller so that is the ic design area and again is a huge uh, you know highly active area next is the embedded system embedded system uh, as the name suggests it is embedded component so you can see the board over here which has several components it has some chips that you can see electronic chips it has this cylindrical structure which are like capacitor these are capacitors actually and there are uh, several other components also that you can see they are connected through metallic traces so on the uh, on this side if you look at the right hand side bottom diagram i have shown a small printed circuit board this is a small, small embedded system it is called a printed circuit board why because on this small board you have many different electronic components connected through metal lines this metal lines or patterns or connectivities are all printed on this board so when you open a motherboard you will see all these metal lines very clearly maybe i have a picture like that not very clearly visible but if you uh, if you remember any motherboard you will find lot of electronic traces right so metal lines parallel metal lines running from one end to another end so these are traces these are printed connections between these components they connect different components like the chips and the capacitor resistor different kinds of components together and that forms a uh, complete uh, uh, embedded board that you can use in different applications so as i have discussed earlier what are the different components you should have you should have a processor for processing the data it should have uh, a sensor for acquiring data it should have a memory for storing data so there are different kinds of components that are coming into this embedded system and uh, uh, so there is a complete there is another uh, domain which deals with designing of these embedded systems programming of these embedded systems so that they can do a desired functionality they can perform a desired job so whatever applications we have whether it is a mobile phone or a computer or any other electronic gadget uh, behind that there is this kind of embedded system there is a, a pcb which is uh, having all these electronic gadgets so designing these pcbs programming these pcbs and making them work to fulfill your functionality that is another area which is called embedded system
and ultimately they lead to application. So you design embedded system for a certain application, right? Um, so this is the uh, hierarchy starting from the nano scale devices going all the way to applications, and each of these are th having their own broad specialization. So if you are entering into electronics engineering, you may choose to work in any of these areas. Some of these areas are more science oriented, more tech oriented. As I said, the device and technology part, semiconductor, nanotechnology, that is more science oriented. Uh, whereas the embedded system applications are more programming oriented, design oriented, that okay, how to program the processor, how to basically connect other components and make the application out of it. So there you don't have to worry about the physics, that okay, how the transistor is working really. You have to uh, think about how to uh, use these existing processors, existing components, existing devices, and integrate them, how to you know, make this embedded system out of it, and how to program that processor so that it works according to my uh, application. So here, less of science. As I go down, it's less of science, and more of coding, more of application, more of uh, basically uh, design things that come into picture. So here, again, I have tried to uh, elaborate it further. This is another classification. This is classification according to the functionality. So if you look at any uh, embedded system, it will have all these different components. So here you can see I, uh, there, there are the different components which are labeled over here. There are some components uh, you can see. Uh, I'm not able to see the mouse. So here you can see MSP430 MCU. So this is a microprocessor, which is basically executing your codes. So to do any functionality, suppose you want to have a imager which is taking image and storing into the memory. So you have to write the code for that. So that code will be executed by this microprocessor, which is sitting over here, right? That is the brain of your entire uh, uh, embedded system that is executing the codes. Likewise, uh, there are a lot of communication interfaces, like uh, you can see the USB uh, interface over here. Likewise, uh, there are radio, there is a radio IC. Radio IC is for communication, wireless communication, is responsible for communicating the data elsewhere. There are some sensor interfaces, there are some inbuilt sensors built on it. Like for example, you can see the humidity and temperature sensor, some boards may have it. This is a commercially available board. So this is having an inbuilt sensor on it also. Uh, likewise, you have a connector, so here, you can see the connector, expansion connector, where you can connect external devices, external sensors to wires. So there are many different components. There, are, there is a power management IC. So here, this golden thing that you see is a power management IC, which is responsible for the power regulation, voltage regulation, etc., on the chip. So when you provide a power from external source or the battery, it is supposed to regulate that power and provide a clean, uh, specified voltage level to the all different ICs on the board. So that is responsible of the power IC. So there are all these different components. So I have just tried to classify them into these categories. One is the uh, the first part, which is analog IC, analog ICs and power management IC. And I have also mentioned some of the uh, companies which are in these areas. So here we talk about analog ICs, Texas Instrument, analog devices are the two top companies that come to mind. There are many others. Uh, so analog ICs, what does analog mean? So any natural information that you take from outside is analog. Right? So when you are taking a sensor data, suppose you're taking a temperature sensor. So the temperature sensor is taking, what does it do actually? It converts uh, the temperature variation into some proportional voltage variation. So uh, that voltage is a continuous quantity. The temperature can vary from the 36.1 to 36.2. Corresponding to that, there will be a voltage variation also. 36.1 to 36.2, maybe the voltage varies from 1.1 uh, 1 .1 volt to 1.15 volt, something like that. That is a continuous analog variation. And then that needs to be converted to digital data. So all of you must be knowing that the computers work with digital data, right? Binary data, one zero. So uh, if you are to present, suppose the number five, so it is one zero zero one. If you have to present number 10, it is having another binary representation. So uh, that analog data needs to be converted into this binary data. So just to inter in, 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 you know, interrupt you here, uh, Professor Began. So you know those people who are studying mathematics functions. So you can see the application of that uh, here directly. So you know there's a mapping going on. So there's an analog uh, data which is mapped to uh, digital data. So hence uh, you now know why functions are so important. So next time when we are having a class on functions, so you better pay attention and learn it properly. Yeah, yeah. So that is, that is the core. So if you uh, that is the core of uh, electronics. So uh, that is the interfacing with the world. So when you are getting data from outside analog and then you convert it into the binary data. And then that data is digital data, which is binary and 
the transistors can deal with that data, right? So when you have the transistors which are like switches, so in order to operate those switches, you must first of all convert that analog information into digital data. If an external sensor is giving you five volt output, that five volt needs to convert into digital uh, or binary representation. That is the work of the analog IC. So these analog ICs are basically responsible for taking the external natural information and converting them into digital data, which the digital processors can compute and communicate. All the communication, all the processing, all the storage in memory, all happens in digital format. So to, the, to do that, these analog ICs are responsible. They are responsible for converting, processing, cleaning all this natural data and converting into the digital data. Uh, the main device which is used for doing all that is analog to digital converter, A to T converter, ADC as it is called. And then there are a lot of other things. Uh, there are amplifiers, there are filters. So whatever audio you may be giving, it may not be strong enough. You need to amplify that audio. So uh, likewise, when you have to increase the volume of your phone or your computer, you just press some buttons. But what is happening over there, that it is basically having a, a D to A converter or uh, basically a, a dig digital to analog converter, which is uh, whatever digital sound you have, digital data that you have in your computer that is converting into analog data so that you can hear it. If you want higher volume, it will basically uh, help you in increasing the power output of that digital to analog converter and uh, listen at a louder volume. So all these analog functions that you see in built into your uh, system, uh, they are responsibilities of these analog ICs. So these analog ICs are generally less in number, but they are very critical to the functionality of the entire board. So when you're talking about the image sensor, they're also the same story. You have, you have millions of pixels, right? You're talking about 20, 30 megapixels of camera. So each pixel is giving you some voltage output and you can imagine this 20 megapixel, 20 million pixel, they are basically producing 20 million different voltages and these voltages are converted into digital data, each of them, maybe 8 bit, 10 bit, 12 bit, 24 bit, each of them. And then these each of these 20 million digital data, 20 bit data is uh, sent to the uh, memory for storage or communicated further. So you can see the complexity of this electronic system. How the information is recorded, processed, stored, and communicated in a very powerful way. So at the very interface, these are these analog ICs which are responsible for doing all that. And then uh, there are also the power management part, why I club it with analog IC? Because it is also analog in nature. So it takes power from external sources, say a solar power panel or a battery or maybe an AC supply. So it converts that into uh, the clean voltage level which can be used by the mm -hmm. system. So these chips are very, very sensitive. They need very, very clean voltage levels to work with. The, the normal voltage that you have from a battery that may be very, very unstable. The battery voltage keeps changing as it discharges. But these ICs need very clean, stable supply to work. So that is the uh, purpose of these analog power management units, which provide very clean uh, voltage levels. Now, of course, uh, these areas themselves are huge domains and the people who want to build career in these areas, they stick to these areas only. So uh, it, it, it may very rarely happen that a person working in analog IC will try to switch to processor. So uh, means during your engineering studies, if you focus on analog ICs, then uh, at least early in your career, you will be focusing, you will be doing jobs in companies which work on analog ICs and you will be working in groups which work on analog ICs in those companies. Second part is the processor, which is again the computing powerhouse of the system right? is crunching all the algorithms, all the digital numbers and giving you all the output. Uh, so that is the job of the processor. And then uh, this is the digital machine, right? So digital design happens over here, how to build a processor that itself is a huge area. And that again requires a good hold on algorithm. So when you talk about processor, since it is digital in nature, again, it closely interfaces with computer science also. So when you're talking about the processor, it has again many components. Um, and they are executing algorithms. So in order to understand, first of all, how an algorithm gets executed on a computer or on a processor, that has to be understood first. And then uh, there are ways to design this processor. And these days, uh, there are many different advanced processors coming, right? You must have heard about multi-core processors, parallel processors, GPUs, you know, uh, which are very powerful, many, many cores uh, and huge amount of memory. So there are many different kinds of powerful processors people are, companies are building. Uh, which are able to process information much more faster. They are able to process much more complicated information also. That is another area. Again, there are a lot of companies 
but the top names like Intel, AMD, IBM, there are many other companies, even Texas Instruments and, and all, they also build processors. The processors is done by many companies, but the generic processor, uh, they are, uh, of course, uh, done by some of the major players. Uh, I have, uh, of course, I can keep on extending the list. If you talk about the GPU, NVIDIA is the major player of GPU, they manufacture GPU specifically, that is also a special kind of processor. Next is the communication IC. Communication IC are responsible for all the communication, wireless communication that happens, right? Uh, all the radio communication, RF communication, Bluetooth communication, all that happens through some specific ICs which are responsible. You can see the radio IC over here, as I said, radio IC CC 2420. So again, these are, uh, again, uh, communication also means serial communication. The one is the wireless communication, another is serial communication, which may happen through wired media. So USB, all these, um, uh, uh, the wired connection that happens through the uh, sensor interface over here, they also require some ICs to do all this job, the communication, wired communication job. So that is the purpose of the communication IC, both wired communication as well as uh, the wireless communication. And the uh, other part is the memory. Again, for uh, any application, you need onboard memory. So some memory is, of course, sitting in the processor also. So each of these chips have their own memory also. So this processor, if you see, the uh, MSP 430, that also has its own memory that is sitting inside the chip, that is an integrated chip. But outside also, there are certain other memory chips which are sitting. So you may have seen uh, there is DRAM uh, sitting on the motherboard. So there are different kinds of memory ICs which are also, there is uh, SD, there is solid state memory these days, uh, like the flash memory you can see over here. So flash memory uh, also is a separate IC which is sitting over here. So these are different kinds of memory, with different capacities which are also sitting on the motherboard. So their design also is another area, another big area. So the concepts are similar, your, you know, uh, the design principles are similar, but the strategy, the experience involved in doing all of these uh, is such that generally people don't cross over these domains. If you become a communication IC engineer today, probably you will be focusing on that for a long part of your career. That's what, uh, that's how industry works. And then of course there are other things, display and the camera, there are again companies which are working on that part also. So that again is more closer to the physics because display, camera, etc. is involving the <coughs> high tech semiconductor technology to uh, make them work. So you can see that, okay, how the electronic hardware basically uh, can be divided on the functional basis. So I have given you two uh, classification. First classification was on the basis of hierarchy, top down hierarchy, starting from the semiconductor switches, how do you come to the application? And each of these are different domains, different levels and uh, people can work, we can choose uh, to work on any of these levels and make the career in any of these levels. There are different companies, different industry groups which cater to each of these levels. No single company works on all these. Uh, so uh, there are, uh, if you talk about applications, you must have heard of, for example, GE, Philips, they are working on applications. Sony, Apple, they are working on applications. Google is also building applications. But of course, there are some companies which will also do many things. Like Google today, they are also building chips. They are also building uh, AI chips. So, uh, but in general, for each of these levels, there are different companies, different industries, a very mature industry, a lot of big players, small players uh, coming. Now, uh, uh, lastly, you know, the CAD tools, as I said, uh, each of these levels, so I showed you different levels, right? So, uh, semiconductor device, then I showed you the IC, and then I showed you the embedded system. So, each of, for these, I have shown three levels of tools. First level of tool, you can see there is a transistor structure being simulated. There is a source, drain, gate, and... Uh, uh, you can set up many parameters, dimensions, materials, uh, and you can simulate this transistor, how it is working. So this is a CAD tool, computer aided design tool, uh, through which you can basically uh, simulate and design transistors. And once you have the uh, results properly coming in the simulation tool, then you say that, okay, means now these simulation results show that if I build this transistor in this way, it is going to work. Then only you go to the actual fab and fabricate these transistors. So this, is, this is actually a fab in IIT Khadakpur electronics department where you can see some uh, guys who are building transistors or devices actually. So first you do it on the CAD tool, then you go to the actual fabrication process. That's how industry also works. So there are a lot of people who will be just experienced in the CAD tool, just developing the CAD tool or working on the CAD tool. There are two things. Either you can be a CAD engineer yourself, that okay, you are responsible for developing those tools, then you are more of a computer science guy. And second part is using those CAD tools to do the device engineering, building those devices, designing those devices, that is a device engineer or a device simulation engineer, device modeling engineer, because you're modeling, you're simulating. And then there are other 
uh, other people who will be actually fabricating. So uh, based on the simulation, you give them the guidelines that, hey, if you use this recipe of technology, this is uh, the way you fabricate, you will get a good transistor. Then you will, they will take your recipe and actually implement it in the kitchen of transistor. Right? This is the actual kitchen where the fabrication is happening. These are fabrication people. So this is, uh, distinction is also there. There are some people who are actually fabricating and some people who are doing the modeling, the design part. Then you have likewise circuit design also in the circuits within the IC. This is the interior of an IC. In a, in, within the chip, you have many different components. So just like an architect builds the map of the entire building, a chip designer builds the map. This is like a nanoscale map of the chip, right? So in this uh, software tool, you can see how different components within the chip are placed. First of all, you do the uh, simulation in the schematic level, symbol level. So there's a transistor. This is a symbolic representation of a simple circuit where you are connecting some transistors, resistors, and building some circuit, making it work. And many such circuit will go into building this large system. So this is like a map. So if you look at it, it looks like a building, right? The top view of a building. So it is like a nanoscale map where many different components are coming together and creating that chip. That is a nanoscale architecture. So that's why in electronic terminology also we call it nanoscale architecture. There is the architecture of the chip because it resembles the building architecture, right? Uh, but of course, apart from design, architecture, we mostly look at design, stability, strength, etc. Here also, there are many different things. It is not only the placement and how you connect things. There are many different things which come into picture uh, in order to make these designs practical and workable in real life. And then uh, finally, uh, you have the next level, which is the PCB design. So here, it is less of a science. Here, it is least science intensive and i would say the learning curve also here it is faster because pcb design does not involve a lot of science it is a tool you can connect the ICs which are already fabricated and then you just need to be careful you have some practical knowledge about how the connections should be made how the chips should be placed how the components should be placed how it should be connected to other things so that is the uh, practical experience that is needed of course it has also a lot of uh, experience requirement but the learning curve here is faster in the IC design field, it is a lot more intensive because it requires a lot of experience regarding circuits and how the designs should be made, the connectivities uh, and the performance, power consumption, speed, all these things are very, very intensive. So these two fields, the first two, this is closest to science. There's more technology, fabrication, science, modeling. Here it is, again, more engineering, a bit of science, but again, a lot of experience, a lot of different things are required here. Uh, to understand chip design and how to make circuits, how to make them work. So you just have uh, read some RLC equation, maybe some Kirchhoff law and those kind of things in your uh, physics course maybe. Uh, but beyond that, there are many things which are required to make these circuits work and perform. For example, this is a simple circuit of an amplifier. It is actually an amplifier circuit made up of transistors and resistors. Now in order to make this kind of amplifier circuit work on a chip, it has a lot of uh, design considerations. There are a lot of issues related to noise, how to make sure that it is capturing the signal without getting affected by the noise, how to make sure that whatever power supply is coming to it, uh, it is clean, how to make sure that uh, these tiny devices, these nano devices, these transistors are ultimately nanoscale devices. Uh, so even, you know, uh, we talk about big switches in our house, we get fuse off, right? Many times our uh, switches in the board, they get, uh, you know, fused. We get uh, uh, fuse which is blowing off and the switch stop working. These are big switches. We are able to handle, we are able to replace those fuels. Here you think about those nanoscale switches. These are few nanometers and they have to work for 10 years without fusing. You can understand what is the challenge involved. In order to make these nanoscale transistors work for 10 years without having fuse, without blowing up, without burning and making sure that it is working continuously without failing. That is happening in all devices, right? So you can understand how much precaution, how much uh, knowledge goes into really making it reliable and work for that many years. So that is the beauty of this uh, domain of IC design. A lot of challenges, a lot of uh, you know engineering technology, a lot of concepts involved. The concept point of view is very, very intensive. So uh, let's, let's go to the uh, other part. So I have covered the hardware part where you know uh, I covered the hierarchy and then I covered the, uh, the functional hierarchy and then the CAD tools. Now let me come to the other uh, major portions. Uh, Next, I talked about the information processing. So I already took, took some examples, like uh, when you are speaking or recording your voice, 
there is uh, an A2D converter, which is basically, first of all, there is a sensor. In the microphone, there is a sensor, which is recording the information, converting into electrical signal. And then there is an A2D or ADC converter, which is converting it into digital data. And then it is sending it to the machine, computer. Now that computer will be doing a lot of filtering, processing on that audio. So here I have shown some functional blocks. FIR, there is a filter, and there are a lot of mathematical processing, algorithm, computation that happens over here. So this is all done by the processors which are sitting inside the system. So in your motherboard, the processor will be doing all this computation that I have shown in this block diagram. A lot of mathematical processing happens, a lot of algorithms are executed, and then you get the clean voice, and which is stored in the memory, or you can later hear it. If you have to hear it again, you have to uh, convert it into analog, which is basically the sound. For that, you have a digital to analog converter. So you feed in the digital recorded voice, and then basically it uh, converts, it generates uh, audio waves out of it. So that is the purpose of the DAC. So then all this processing is basically digital signal processing, which happens inside the system. Likewise, image. Image is just a 2D data. So when you talk about audio, it is a 1D data. It is a one-dimensional data. Right? It is running continuously. Uh, image is a 2D data because here it is a two-dimensional. And uh, here also, again, a lot of things are involved, like filtering uh, and many kinds of processing. Compression happens because when you are transmitting a video, you would like to transmit a smaller volume. Or you are storing of the video, you would like to store a smaller volume rather than the raw volume. And you have limited memory, you have limited bandwidth, you have limited power. So you want to maximize the use of your memory space, your bandwidth, etc., and minimize the size of these uh, videos, images, without losing information. So that also requires a lot of compression. You may have heard about MPEG, JPEG. These are compression formats. So they are also executed using some specific processing techniques. There's a lot of filtering also that happens. So all that is done by the DSP part, whether it is image processing or 1D signal processing, that is done by the processors. There's a huge amount of processing power involved in that. Now, of course, these days, uh, people are talking about artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is, again, about processing information. The same thing. You are processing images, videos, audios, any kind of data, but you are drawing some inference out of it or making some conclusions out of it. For example, here I have shown you an image being analyzed. It is a surveillance camera image, which is capturing some traffic data, like traffic image. And here you can see that using AI, uh, we are able to detect like how many people are work, uh, walking over here, how many human beings, how many cars, how many trucks, how many bicycles. So that is our function, right? Our brain is able to identify all these things. Once we see this kind of image, we can easily say, right? Where is the traffic light? Where are people? Where is the car? Where is the signboard? All those things we can do easily. But now people are making the computer to do all that. So automatically it should be able to tell if the car is speeding and breaking the traffic rules, it should be able to detect the number plate automatically and register the data. Wirelessly it should be able to alert the police that, okay, this is the car plate number plate, which has violated the traffic signal and gone. So then the police should take action. So that requires, first of all, detecting the car, detecting the speed, detecting the number plate, reading the number plate, getting a digital number, sending it to the police. So that all it requires artificial intelligence, right? Just like humans apply their intelligence to get that information. Here also the computer is doing that. The computer attached to the camera over there that is doing that. That is done by artificial intelligence. And again, all these things are coming into picture, audio, video signal, image signal, all those things are there. But again, there is some additional processing algorithms that are being executed on those processors. Those intelligent algorithms, they come from computer science. So computer science people give us uh, all those intelligent algorithms which are to be executed to do all this. Of course, there is a very thin boundary these days between electronics and computer science. So if you're entering into electronics uh, and you're working on the data processing, information processing, uh, you can choose to work on this particular domain, which is more close to computer science, in fact, which is dealing with the processing of information, inferring some results out of that information using artificial intelligence or image processing or many different kinds of uh, data analytics uh, schemes that are there. So this is uh, uh, this has less to do with hardware. Of course, there are hardware issues here also, uh, like you have to talk about processing power, what is the processing speed, uh, whether you should compute on the computer or you should compute somewhere in the server, in the cloud. Uh, so all these things come into picture. But here, the guy who is working on artificial intelligence algorithm, 
people not be worried about transistor how the transistor is working how the processor is working that job is done by electronics engineer he has given him the processing power he has given him the motherboard he has given him different kinds of platforms he has given him server hardware he has given him gpu he has given him all kinds of hardware he doesn't worry about them he just uses them and he works on the code to implement those algorithms on all these platforms that is the work of the uh, engineer who is working on this data processing information processing etc and these days there are a lot of very exciting application here i have shown you some standard application uh, but i may if the time permits i will show you some of the very interesting application which are very novel in one sense uh, like you can have brain signal processing so one of the craziest application these days is that you can put some sensors in the brain and they can sense your electrical signal of the brain and using that you can predict what is the person thinking or using that you can uh, operate machines so rather than you know doing your using your hand you can use your brain signals and you can play a game so there are a lot of very uh, fancy applications also coming up and of course healthcare also there are a lot of uh, many different applications where there are different sensors sensing your health parameters like there can be a sensors on your button uh, which is sensing your heartbeat continuously and it is sending data to the mobile phone and that mobile phone is sending data to the doctor and it is continuously monitoring your health parameter how the heartbeat is uh, working how the respiration rate is going uh, whether there is any problem coughing etc what is the pattern of coughing uh, what is the you know blood sugar level all these things can be continuously monitored by a small electronic gadget sitting in your button and or uh, you know in your locket or in your belt on your wrist watch and it can be updating the the uh, doctor so there also there is a lot of biomedical signal processing all these raw data that come from the sensor there is a lot of processing that is involved so all these electronic devices which are responsible for data acquisition they have some data processing involved and that itself is a big field it has more to do with algorithms mathematics and uh, the processing techniques uh, data preparation uh, so uh, that is uh, more closer towards the interface between computer science and electronics okay yeah so just to interrupt uh, professor nrik i'm here the question uh, from a student is uh, for artificial intelligence do we take computer science or electronics engineering so this is a uh, you know so these people are you know very fascinated by uh, these terms ai and uh, ml and all those things so there will be typically lots of such questions related to that so what will be your response yes see so uh, if you are 100% sure that you know uh, electronics hardware is completely no no for you and you want to purely work on uh you know software side then maybe computer science is a better option but uh, electronics and communication uh you have the specialization as i said uh, means you have the specialization of communication and signal processing information processing which has all these things so it does not hurt you only thing is of course in electronics what will happen is you will have to unwillingly do some electronic hardware courses also because you are in electronics department but if you go to computer science you can skip all those hardware related courses and focus only on the algorithm that is the benefit but end goal will not be much different i mean this i think uh, i'll just add one point here ai is a tool so please remember you cannot isolate ai and uh, you know work in uh, a silo so ai is a tool which is implemented even in let's say for example i was a mechanical engineer but i implemented ai in you know fine tuning manufacturing so hence you have to also understand uh, the nuances of that particular field so ai can be implemented in, in, even in economics yeah yeah so so, that's a, so the, it's a tool so you know uh, uh, only tool in itself yes you can be a computer science engineer and develop very proficient and effective uh, you know those uh, ai tools but ultimately those tools are effective only when you know we know which area you are going to implement it on and hence you also have to have some bit of knowledge on that of that particular area where you are going to implement because the tool design itself will be a function of which area you are going to implement it on so hence in my opinion correct me if i'm wrong professor rigan that you know the for ai you cannot be only computer science engineer and hence you would be like uh, you know a great ai uh, engineer or a designer of algorithms yeah true true so uh, very correct so ai is a tool which can be uh, used across domains so it is a interdisciplinary domain and many different department whether it is mechanical engineering or civil engineering or uh, even Uh, chemical engineering many different departments are using it in different ways right uh, and uh, even electronics product that i will be talking about i will show you some domains in electronics which are also very interdisciplinary and it can be used across domains and different departments studying i mean there are many different students across the department who work on those domains so one thing is that okay applying those tools one is applied work where there are certain tools developed and you are trying to apply them in certain application 
so this can be done by any department any discipline you don't have to go be very deep into the algorithm itself you are not really developing the algorithm you are not proposing new algorithms so that requires a deep understanding of the algorithm itself you need to basically uh, again it's not necessary that you have to be a computer science engineer if you have a strong interest these days there are a lot of electives you can take additional courses electives you can still go to that level that you can come up with novel algorithms you can innovate at the algorithm level that is one level of work uh, and the second is applied work where you are applying these two so there you just need to understand how it works and the, how to tweak with it how to tweak with the parameters you are not innovating on the tool itself you are applying that tool so the application part can be done by all whereas hardcore design and development innovation on the tool itself that requires of course more intense computer science yeah so you have I, it seems uh, you have created some bit of uh, you know uh, spark the curiosity in uh, the students now they are asking a lot of questions so maybe we'll be we'll have to spend some time on them so the another question which is by monish i believe is if one wants to make an operating system how much knowledge of hardware is required so this is the question so operating system of course uh, when we study an operating system course the first slide or the first day first few lectures will be about the computer architecture so the two things go together computer architecture and operating system so you can't detach the computer architecture from operating system so operating system need to have understanding of the computer architecture again what does the architecture mean architecture doesn't mean that you have to go and do the chip design architecture or a semiconductor device you don't need all of those but you need the high level architecture of the uh, the the board that you are working on what is the motherboard how what is the processing power over there what is the memory over there so uh when you talk about say the processor architecture so uh, the computer architecture specifically uh, basically deals with the processor architecture so there uh, the operating system is tightly uh, linked with the processor architecture so that processor architecture has many things which determines how much processing power it will have it has multiple levels of memories level 1 cache level 2 cache level 3 cache it has a certain number of processing cores it has certain networking between those cores so all those things you need to understand if you are working on a Uh, operating system which is for multi core you need to understand how that uh, communication between the cores happen how those cores communicate with the memory ics uh, or the memory part of the processor so that overall architecture you need to understand in order to basically uh, be able to develop an operating system you so don't I understand that. That. So just to add again here uh, monisha to your query you know operating system the moment you ask is if you are saying i am designing an operating system the subsequent natural question will be on what platform or for what platform so hence uh, you know uh, 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 it, the, it, the underlying thing is you must be very well aware of the uh, processor or the platform or for which you are designing the operating system and that's what uh, uh, my understanding is uh, am i right uh, professor yeah, yeah that's what i said like uh, you know the essential parts like how many cores what is the memory and what kind of architecture it is following what is the bus and uh, what is the bus architecture of that uh, so there are some processors which are for example noc processor network on chip there are multiple cores and they are communicating through a network so for that the operating system will be different if you have a single processor there the the operating system will be slightly you know different so uh, of course the general operating system that we use for our processors you know they also take care of you know uh, this entire processor architecture but there are certain specific uh, emerging architectures of the processors for that the operating system is very very different like uh, you may have specific ai processors for executing these uh, ai algorithm right so for that the operating system will be uh, different okay so <laughs> sorry you know we have to you know there are lots of again questions which are coming up so maybe we can interact with the students to understand uh, you know if they have some spe specific and then we'll also briefly talk about the exam called je so we they, that is left uh, you know we have to discuss that as well so before that let us take these questions so the next question is from karun and uh, the question is if one wants to make an operating uh, sorry uh, this is uh, uh, yeah uh, is something like an alexa or siri a combination of digital signal processing and ai and how will it work so uh, just to repeat the question is something like an alexa or siri a combination of digital signal processing and ai and how will it work so karun if you know you can yeah is that is that the question what you are asking could i phrase it well so do you understand what, what is the question Yeah, yeah yeah so now see uh, when you talk about alexa or siri so uh, definitely there is some ai into it because your voice is getting recorded and it is responding to your voice right so it is playing certain uh, you know uh, songs or uh, you know certain music based on your choice so uh, they, that is basically detecting what you are trying to speak 
So there is something called natural language processing, which is a part of AI or a subdomain of AI, where you try to decipher what is being spoken, right? So just like a natural person does. So there, the recorded voice, you're trying to separate out words and sentences and phrases, try to extract the keywords and understand what the person has said, like an intelligent algorithm. That is the AI part, which is executing over there. And uh, uh, then once it is figuring or whether once it is able to figure out that this is the instruction given by the speaker, then it basically brings that data from the website or visits that website and plays that from that internet server. That is how it works. So definitely there is some AI involved in that. Okay. Now, this is something from Anurag who's asking, sir, can't you develop a compiler agnostic OS like Linux, then compile it for all processor architectures? That's very difficult because, you know, uh, different kinds of architectures, uh, you know, their requirements are different and uh, there are a lot of things starting from uh, the communication between processor and memory and the overall memory architecture, how many levels of memories, all these things and the networking between multiple processors. So it requires some customization. So different, depending upon the uh, overall architecture of the system, you need to have some customization. So it's as good as saying we are chasing some unified law of physics. So the day that is possible, this, this will also be possible, I believe, because there are lots of standardization has to be done, I believe. You yeah. can, of course, combine multiple things together and make a comprehensive universal package. And, uh, you know, based on that, you can select uh, from, you know, what part will work where. So that can always be done. Just, just like SOC in the hardware side, we are seeing integration. People are integrating multiple components together on the same IC. So likewise, here also we may see uh, these capabilities getting integrated and a universal operating system coming. So maybe you, you guys have this opportunity later on in, you know, in your career, maybe you can take this up as a challenging uh, project. Okay, so the next question is, uh, uh, yeah, they just finished saying, I have heard many colleges offer electronics and instrumentation. What is it about and what are the opportunities? Yeah. The instrumentation part is uh, we also have electrical engineering uh, in our uh, IIT Kharagpur and it has instrumentation engineering as a part of it. So there is an instrumentation engineering course within electrical engineering. So their instrumentation simply means building instruments. So you are instrumenting, you are basically applying electronics or electrical engineering knowledge to build something. That is instrumentation. So when you're talking about building an application, uh, there I showed to you that, okay, there is a PCB involved, right? So PCB level, uh, embedded system development, you know, data acquisition system, up, attaching sensors to it, getting data, processing that data on the PCB, communicating that data. So it all requires some kind of instrumentation, right? So that is the hardware development part, specifically application oriented hardware development part that is called instrumentation. Uh, so again, that is not very closely linked with the very lower levels, like the semiconductor device, IC design, those things you don't have to touch, but it is more about application design, the, the embedded system design, the overall system design. That is for, uh, for that part, for your information, IIT Kharagpur offers BTEC for your uh, course on instrumentation engineering, which is part of electrical engineering department only. Yes. So that's, I think only IIT Kharagpur offers that course across all the IITs, I believe. Yeah, I think. In the undergrad level. So uh, that's one information. Okay. So the next question is from Tinshuk and he's asking about Siri and Alexa. Isn't it more of machine learning? So yes. So what is the difference between the two AI, ML? Maybe you can throw some light over there. Yeah. I already uh, told you that, okay, means uh, it has having some machine, some AI involved in that, right? So, okay. So machine learning is part of AI, if I might distinguish. Yeah, means, uh, in a way, they are linked together. So uh, AI is a broader term. Machine learning is a part of it. Uh, machine learning means, okay, means you are basically, uh, the hardware is learning the information and through that uh, learning, through that memory, it is able to take certain decisions. So that is, uh, you know, specifically machine learning. That is one, uh, basically, specific aspect of AI. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, now the question which we were discussing the other day, now they have the questions around the uh, scope of quantum computing and uh, how, how far it is from India at least. So that will- Quantum will... computing is an emerging area, one of the uh, very highly active areas of research in electronics. Uh, and that again has research at uh, multiple levels. So at the lowest level, it is about the nanotechnology, what kind of semiconductor devices should be used for implementing quantum computing. Uh, many, uh, researchers earlier, they proposed devices which require superconductivity. They require very, very low temperature. Unless that is happening, it will not work. Now there is research how to make it work at room temperature so that uh, we can have practical systems out of it. And then uh, how to make it stable, how to make it really readable, 
So there are a lot of different kind of devices that people have uh, tried to explore to implement this. People are also trying optical uh, methods like how to do quantum computing using light at nanoscale. So there are uh, silicon waveguides through which you can pass light and through the interaction of lights and different waveguides, you can do some computing, uh, basically com quantum computing. So again, um, yeah. in terms of uh, potential, there is huge potential, but uh, in terms of research level, there is a lot to be done. There are companies which have come up with uh, quantum computing processors, but still uh, the performance, the computing power, etc., uh, and especially the reliability part that needs to be asserted. Like the CMOS technology that uh, we have today, which is basically responsible for all the processing power that we have, that is a very mature technology, a very reliable technology. Uh, but the quantum computing part is yet to basically come to that level. Okay. So in India, in India, in India going forward, uh, do you see some uh, some some of that rising up in, in in terms of opportunities, professional opportunities? If are our IDs working on this uh, field uh, aggressively? Definitely, as I said, uh, there, uh, one level of research is the the device semiconductor part, and second part of the research is on the algorithm part, like how do you build quantum computing algorithms and how do you make it more efficient, etc. So okay. both parts there are researches going on, and there are some groups which are working on that you know semiconductor nanophysics and the devices the material uh, that requires very very sophisticated labs and facilities there which are available in very very few uh, institutes in india and uh, abroad also okay. and then there are algorithm level work which are of course doable from more places and uh, uh, developing algorithms more reliable algorithms uh, that is i would say more accessible and can be doable from uh, more number of institutes I see. Great. So, because of the interest of time, I'll also have to, you know, invite uh, Moinak now, so maybe he can throw some light on uh, Moinak. Can, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, sorry to keep you waiting, Moinak. So, Moinak is a third-year uh, undergrad student in IIT Kharagpur currently. So, all those who aspire to become future IITians, uh, he is the man to look for is the inspiration. So, yes, uh, Moinak, yeah. tell us about yourself, and then yes, uh, you know, whatever you wanted to discuss with all of these students, please inspire them. All right. So. Uh, my name is Moina Ghosh. I'm a third year un undergraduate student in the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Kharagpur, enrolled in this dual degree course. Uh, I'm a passionate electronics hobbyist and I'm interested in everything electronics. Like whatever. Just, just, just to, inter just to interrupt yeah. you, Moina, this is how you give introduction to seniors in IIT Kharagpur. Guys, who, those who want to get into IIT Kharagpur tomorrow, so you know how what is the sequence of, because if you don't follow the sequence, you know, IIT KGP will not give, is going to forgive you. So yes, these, good. Are very yeah. these guys, uh, they can send uh, messages to the dean and, uh, you know, we will get caught. And I think <laughs> I, I, am, I, am, I am just an IIT senior, so I don't really, you know, I I don't have my... <laughs> yes, very good, Moena, please, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what I'll talk on today is, I think Sir has uh, covered all the aspects of electronics engineering in depth, and I don't need to go into the theoretical concepts anymore. What I can uh, tell you is uh, what you can expect after coming to IIT. Like, what does an electronic student actually, what kind of projects can an electronic student do? Like, I can, uh, through my projects, I will show you that uh, to do, uh, like, to uh, do any real life project in electronics, you don't need to be a researcher as such. So, uh, can I get sc screen share? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Yeah, uh, yeah um, uh, you have to just uh, give this. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, can you see now? Yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. share the screen. Yes, go ahead. All right. So, I started sharing my screen. I hope it's visible. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what I'll talk about is the uh, is the application of all the theory that sir discussed over here. Like uh, sir has mentioned some of part of that also. The main application of electronics, what, uh, what an average individual is concerned about is IOT or the internet of things. The internet of things is nothing but uh, like it's a, it's a network that connects all things around you, like your smartphone, your desktop, the sensor that is sensing moisture on the agricultural field, it connects everything to a common uh, network that's called the internet. So that is why we call it the internet of things because things, physical objects are connected to each other. The basic structure of this uh, internet of things uh, system is uh, th th there are two things that you need to, uh, that you can interact with uh, when you talk about IOT. One thing is the thing or the, the physical device that actually takes readings from 
the surroundings like sir mentioned an application where a camera was taking input uh, like a camera was observing traffic on the road so that is your thing it is taking in data from uh, the camera and that data is being fed to the cloud now how is that happening it's happening through a gateway a gateway is nothing but uh, you can consider it to be a router uh, like you have a like you have your mobile phone that connects to the internet uh, over 4g or 3g whatever so you can consider the mobile phone as a gateway that connects to your uh, whatever sensors are there on your phone to the cloud what happens in the cloud after you get the data now this is where all the signal processing and uh, the image processing part whatever processing you want to do in the on the data this is where all the analytics comes in this is obviously more related to computer science and mathematics but uh, this is a very integral part of electronics today like there are very few devices which will not have any analytics today all right and the last thing uh, that uh, the last thing in an iot system is the interaction with the user like uh, someone talked about alexa and siri like these devices communicate with the end user like uh, the human being over a uh, voice right like you say something to alexa and that audio signal is processed and then alexa speaks back something to you so that that's the user interface now how do we apply well, this uh, concept of iot into actual real world scenarios so there are many applications in or diverse fields and i don't be, i don't think there is any field where iot cannot be applied common people can make a difference they can make real life applications in all the fields like uh, like uh, suppose you want to uh, the main applications are in smart homes like uh, you uh, uh, take alexa for example like that is an embedded device that is an electronics de- uh, electronic device that interacts with you it uh, collects data from uh, the surroundings and based on that it uh, performs certain types of analysis like voice analysis and then it uh, uh, helps you with all your housework like you can tell alexa turn on the fan or turn on the lights and it will do that so that is uh the concept of of a smart home how smart devices are using electronics to uh make your home smart and they are being used to make your life easier similarly we can find applications of iot everywhere i'll jump straight to the applications like this is another application of uh, iot uh, sorry to interrupt but it would be good if you could like uh, whatever you have done like have you tried right. that yeah yeah some right. example that you have taken that could right. be more, uh, you know relatable yeah especially uh, that those having some electronics component heavy electronics component other than uh, the you know uh, mechanical all right. part all right so uh, i'll start with some uh, some of my projects so okay so currently everyone uh, like since uh, it's the season of covid and we are in this pandemic for more than a year now so obviously it makes sense to build a real life application around covid right so this is a this is an iot device that i built a year back so what this does is that uh, it turns a normal cap into an iot device what that does is that it takes in camera a uh, camera feed from this camera that you can see on the cap right it tries to detect uh, th- uh, from the images that it captures it tries to to, to detect the faces of people it tries to tag these people like uh, it identifies that uh, this person is x or this person is y it stores that data in an online database and that online database is linked to the arogya setu app so as soon as that uh, if there is a if the if that person comes uh, uh, closer than 2 meters to you immediately there's a buzzer on the cap that warns you that uh, Uh, you need to move away from this person again uh, since it is linked to the arogya setu app as soon as that person is uh, diagnosed of covid you must be knowing that uh, uh, re- uh, doctors usually uh, uh, mark the status of that patient on the arogya setu app as affect covid affected so as soon as that p- patient is marked as covid affected all the persons who came uh, in in the vicinity of that person 
they are uh, warned like you can imagine the impact such a device can have if this is implemented on a large scale if everyone starts using these smart caps like we would have a complete contract tracing uh, network like and everyone would be warned in time like before uh, they can be affected by covid or before uh, like uh, any mishap can happen so as you can see uh, at the heart of this application like this can seem a very novel application and may seem very complicated but at the heart of this it's a very simple uh, circuit that's uh, doing all this stuff all right there's a lot of image processing involved and a lot of uh, uh, processing that is going on in the cloud also but you can see that uh, using very simple uh, uh, development boards development boards are nothing but uh, electronic circuits that are made for hobbyists or individuals like you and me to program so that you can make real world applications so you can use these uh, development boards to make real life applications without being a researcher and without having much knowledge of electronics also so uh, this is the beauty of internet of things like anyone can make a change in a real life application yeah. so, another one oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. please carry on carry on sorry yeah all right so uh, continuing with this theme of uh, covid so uh, 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 many of you who are residing in metros like bangalore or mumbai you must be aware of the ride sharing platforms like uh, wherein you just have to uh, uh, register on an app so that you can share cycles that are parked in the neighborhood right uh, there are uh, sh uh, cycle sharing apps like yolo bikes and i don't know bounce i guess yeah so uh, what's happening due to the covid situation is that uh, people are reluctant to use these ride sharing platforms because obviously to ride a cycle you'll have to come in contact with all uh, you will have to sit on the cycle obviously so what's the solution one solution can be you uh, sanitize the uh, cycle after every use so what we can do is that we can place paper, like uh sanitize uh, we can place uh, disinfectant uh, uh treated paper paper uh, uh, disp uh, dispensers at all these parking lots where these cycles are parked so if a user has to use a, a cycle he will uh, not think uh, he will just uh, he will just uh, use his mobile phone uh, to activate this paper dispenser he will uh, use this paper to uh, sanitize the cycle and then use it so in this way uh, uh, like this is a way to like uh, incentivize uh, the uh, ride sharing platform like the, uh, these ride sharing platforms have taken huge losses because people are not using them this will promote the use of these ride hailing platforms because uh, you can just uh, you can just uh, sanitize your cycle by this simple iot device now what this iot device does is it's linked to the cloud so whenever uh, the paper in this dispenser will uh, like uh, it will be uh, uh, like the roll is uh, uh, like supposed to end that time it will just send a notification to the uh, to the concerned authorities and they can come and uh, refill the paper roll so that's how you can create a real life application with these iot devices so uh, this is the data analysis part where you can sit at home, like the, the authorities can uh, check where uh, what is the status of that uh, iot device like over here you can see that uh, we can see that the paper status is 88.7% which means that 88% of the paper roll is still in on the parking lot this is another example of a very simple iot device that is uh, that can make a very big change yeah again uh, i'll talk about the last embedded application uh, that i've worked on so here you can see uh, a race car all right so you uh, your impression of a race car might be that uh, uh, like a race car is uh, more related to mechanical engineering and a mechanical guys are supposed to work on that since uh it has uh, things like motors and engines and stuff like that so but uh, let me tell you that even the most basic so basic of cars has around 40 to 50 microprocessors in that so there is a lot of electronics that goes on into making and making even an ic engine vehicle work 
so you can see over here that uh, we've uh, designed all these electronic devices from scratch so what happens over here is uh, when the car is running all the data that we collect from all the sensors in the car like the wheel speed or the acceleration or the noise that the car is making everything is logged and that is sent to the cloud so that the data can be processed now how will we use this data this data can be used to give feedback to the driver like how is he driving at what point in the track is he slowing down and how should he improve like this is a very important uh, this is very important for student teams who are competing in um, racing competitions you can see over here that uh, we have a a uh, user interface for the driver also like the driver can see at what speed he is driving what is the status of the battery what is the temperature of the engine he can see all that stuff right on his dashboard and this is the example of the user interface that i talked about earlier so okay. yeah so that's about it these are the kinds of projects you can work on without being a researcher but just being an electronic student yeah Over thanks, time. thanks, Monak. Thanks a lot for your uh, you know insights. I hope you're safe and uh, you know enjoying Kharagpur campus. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So back to uh, uh, Professor Brigan. You wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm glad that Monak is also working. He's just started working on another IC design project. So he's working on a chip design project which is uh, under ISRO. So he will be uh, working on a chip which is responsible for data communication between multiple ICs. So oh. high-speed data communication chips. So that is another interesting project that he is going to embark on soon. Oh, very good. So, uh, so that is a different taste. But that, of course, as I said, IC design itself requires a lot more uh, focused knowledge base about the chip design concepts, analog circuits, digital circuits. So that that uh, is a more specialized domain, and only those who have taken all these core courses in electronics they can handle that. But uh, embedded system or IoT, of course, it is. uh more open in nature this is not that deep in concept so you can learn programming you can learn how to connect devices how to program these uh commercially available uh, development boards uh, and basically uh, execute your operation develop your application <clears throat> so let me you know uh, uh towards the end let me show you uh, one or two applications where you have a nice combination of multiple uh, component that i have discussed like the hardware part the ai or the data processing part the communication part the power management part all taken together so let me show you couple of uh, such applications uh, so uh, let me share the screen once again so i hope you got a good uh, a glance of how students work so moinak is of course one of the most active students uh, working on many different projects at the same time and uh, throughout Uh, right from early stages he has been very active uh, right from early i think second year he has been working on a lot of different projects uh, so likewise in any good campus you will get all these opportunities there are student groups uh, which work on different major products uh, and uh, you can join those groups you can learn things uh, you don't need to wait for courses in the uh, department to happen many things can be learned in student groups also and you can get started with some of these uh, <clears throat> some of these uh, uh, projects early on in your and i think uh, there is a lot of uh, inclination towards publication as well and earlier during our time undergrads were not very encouraged to because we did not know anything but today uh, you know uh, 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 publication side also undergrad students are actively participating and getting you know publications yeah, yeah. in reputed journals ieee journals and other things yeah right? yeah and uh, publication and patents as well so iits and other colleges they have their own patent cell also if you are innovating something you are doing something new developing a new product uh you can patent it also you can publish it also so uh, that also gives you a lot of credit for your project that that is a very important thing and it helps you in uh you know your future goal especially if your goal is higher studies etc it helps you a lot okay so many things of course we have uh, uh, not been able to discuss about uh, higher studies well, and other but anyways also. we will do is we'll have to do a sub you know part wise uh, this thing maybe because i think uh, there is lots lot lot of lot of things to be uh, learned guys so just uh, you know so uh, what we can do is we can have multiple parts of it anyways yes uh, we can have a follow up questions like yes yes so i hope you can see the screen again so i will show you couple of applications where you know you have multiple components involved so first one again uh, i will keep the description very very short and very brief so first one is about a surveillance system which we are trying to deploy in 
security sensitive area suppose border area or forest areas where you need to detect human movement so it is a restricted area but uh, uh, if there is a human trespassing you want to detect it now these are very inaccessible areas forest or hills or border areas uh, where you don't have the freedom to uh, basically deploy power lines and have wired connectivity to connect these devices from power neither uh, nor you have uh, basically a uh, frequent access that you can go and change the batteries etc so the major constraint is that these devices uh, should be able to last long with a small battery they should be able to operate long so uh, towards that end we have uh, one of my student in my phd student who has just completed his phd he has worked on some very interesting uh, algorithms and techniques which can be deployed on tiny embedded boards along with the camera which processes both audio and video so there is a the audio signal being recorded and using that audio signal processing it can detect whether it's a human being walking or there is any some other animal walking or some other natural disturbances so imagine in a forest you have many different noises like birds and leaves and wind and what not rain so there are not lot of natural noises also so among all that natural noise how do you train your artificial intelligence to identify that yeah this is a sound of human footstep or a human being running walking talking in the vicinity of that sensor so if that can be done then you know get the camera gets activated and basically starts capturing the video because if you keep the camera on always it will burn a lot of power you know you can't keep the video on all the time so only there is a conditional activation of camera once that audio system which is a low power signal right audio is a 1d data it is a smaller amount of data for the same duration if you capture audio that is a much smaller data as compared to video so that audio basically uh, it is processed and uh, once the activity is detected with a high probability it starts sending the video pic or pictures to the server and it start analyzing so uh, rather than sending the videos it can also that processor can also compute all the ai on that device itself and send only the result so if you have to communicate smaller amount of information rather than the entire raw data you are computing the information right there and sending the result to the server and then the system gets alerted so this is one interesting application there is again here we have not really gone into the uh, hardware design ourselves but one of the target is to have a custom ic also a chip also which can do entire thing by itself rather than having an off the shelf processor so this board is of course off the shelf and this kind of boards are available in the market you can take it and you can program it you can burn your code main thing is your algorithms and maybe the power management part like you have a solar, small solar panel with the help of which you can power this so that you don't have to change the pattern so there is some hardware aspect coming into it there are some things which are off the shelf this board the embedded system board you are buying from the market maybe power management units like the power the solar power panel and the batteries etc all integrate together with this one in a package so that hardware level design is there but apart from that uh, the major focus is on the algorithm development which can uh, execute this audio and video processing in a constrained power constrained way so this uh, you know is very suitable for defense applications security applications we are applying it we are testing it right now this, is, this has been developed by a couple of schools uh, so this is a packaged uh, device now uh, of the biomedical side also we have a lot of work i will not go into that uh, so biomedical side uh, we have uh, several students on our group which have who have been working on biomedical ic design as well as signal processing let me come to the iot application another iot application which has uh, uh, all these components including uh, ai including communication power management all involved so this is a, a pest trap this is Uh, a device which is having an electronic system you see this is the green colored box house shaped box within the uh, box on the roof there is a electronic gadget attached again it has a embedded system board it has a camera what is this embedded system doing on the floor of this house like structure there is a pheromone sheet which is having some chemicals to attract pests in the park uh, and also there is a led glowing the so pest mostly pest attack happens during the night time so there is a led glowing and there is a pheromone sheet which attracts it releases some chem chemicals which attract the insects to this box now when the insects come they get stuck to this box uh, there is this sheet this pheromone sheet at the bottom and this camera is basically continuously taking images you can see this green color small camera over here is continuously taking the image of these sheets and there is a processor you can see this is a processor board there is a embedded system board on which there is a powerful processor so that processor is continuously applying ai on these images and trying to identify what kind of insect these are whether it is a normal you know common insect like a fly or there is some dangerous pest coming which is going to destroy the crop so if you are able to diagnose the pest at an early stage that okay uh, you know some dangerous pest has started coming you diagnose it using this system 
and alert the farmer. Then he can take timely action and he can basically spray uh, the pesticide or he can take some corrective measures so that his crop is safe. Otherwise, it can uh, result to huge losses. If the insects grow and they come in large numbers, all of a sudden it can result in huge losses. So this early warning system, by just uh, detecting the arrival of these insects, it can alert the farmer and it can save the uh, farmer from huge losses. So again, there is a lot of you know AI coming into picture. There is this uh, electronic device sensing the imaging system coming into picture. And then, of course, it has to work in agriculture field. Uh, power management is an issue. So this entire system works with a solar panel. So uh, this entire system is powered by a solar panel. The power management unit also sits inside this box. It is responsible for power delivery to this electronic system using that solar panel. So again, uh, that is also an integral part of any application. So when you think about application, you have to think about practical challenges. Uh, and uh, you, know, uh, you have to make sure that in the particular scenario, like in this case, the isolated farm application, it can work for long hours. Yeah. Uh, another yeah. thing is uh, the wireless communication. Like if you, uh, rather than processing the data here, if you send the data to the cloud, the entire video stream or all the images to the cloud, again, it will consume more power. So to save the power, it is processing right here and sending only the result to the cloud. And then of course, uh, there are software in the app. You can see uh, like which insects have arrived and what is the number of insects you know, in the software application that you have in Android, uh, you can see all that result. So uh, again, the software part is also an integral part of the overall application. Uh, so to be taken together, the hardware and the software combined together, you get the complete application. So electronics, yeah. the hardware, the AI, power management, and then ultimately the software application, which is like a web application or an Android application that you use your mobile phone, through which the farmer is able to visualize what is happening in his field. Because when he's sitting at his home, he has to use that Android application. That is the computer science part coming into picture. And then there are, you know, the electronics part. Likewise, you know, there are many uh, different applications that we have developed, including, you know, uh, the, the, the combination of all these things. So when you have an application at hand, electronics comes into picture, but you have to uh, think about the overall big picture. And generally, you have to work in a team. Maybe there is a, a person in your team who is talking about, say, the electronic hardware design, there is another person who is talking about the AI development, another person who is more expert on the software app development. So that completes the application. So in a, a student's group, if you work on application, there's a huge number of prospects, huge number of potentials. And generally, you don't have to worry about every component yourself. You focus on what is your interest area. And then in the team, other people can talk about, uh, they can basically uh, take care of other components in the project. That's how application development happens. And these kind of applications are highly commercializable. So if you develop something uh, interesting, you can commercialize, you can have a startup out of field, you can basically uh, sell these products or you can license with some existing companies or even government. Uh, if you have uh, products like these, which are uh, you know uh, usable in the uh, field and usable by people. So uh, I hope you, know, you could get a overview exactly starting from the essentials of electronics and what you learn in electronics, how do you apply it over here? And, in a college scenario, how do you basically apply all this learning and work in groups and develop something which are useful for people, right? Uh, so with this, I would, uh, you know, conclude uh, my discussion. I'd be open yeah. to questions. Thanks, Thanks uh, Professor Mrigang. And uh, I know that this is uh, not, uh, you know, what do you say? It's not sufficient because this uh, field is so vast and there are lots of questions from students also, I am I'm sure. But, uh, you know, uh, at least, guys, you got a glimpse of what the, uh, you know, uh, the field is, what all streams you can specialize into and, uh, uh, you know, how it can directly impact uh, lots of people. So if you are into hobby electronics as well, or whether you take up electronics later on in colleges like IITs or many other uh, NITs and other uh, uh, colleges are offering electronic courses. So if you happen to land up in electronic course, there's a vast potential, no doubt about it. And obviously, again, um, so those who are not getting an opportunity to study electronics, that doesn't mean you will not be able to do it. Because as I told you, and we have been talking about it quite often, that none of the fields are, you know, uh, you know, isolated. So it is a multidisciplinary world. You have to anyways, uh, you can definitely do uh, cross uh, department uh, uh, studies as well. For example, I know that IIT Kharagpur offers a major minor concept that you can do a major in one particular branch and take a minor in uh, some other branch uh, to you know complement your uh, uh, course. So those things are there. So what we'll do is we will have another uh, session uh, with uh, Professor Mrigang and maybe a few more of his team members. And uh, we will talk about, let's say, opportunities in terms of 
what all colleges because we don't we had we had planned but we could not get time to touch upon which all colleges are there india abroad should you uh, should the case be that you want to pursue a phd then how to go about it how does it help whether you can do a job first and then jo- then go for higher studies or you finish your studies completely and then go for employment and all those uh, aspects we wanted to touch upon so it's a good uh, what do you say exposure to the field right now so let us uh, uh 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 can you know convene once again do one more round of such discussion and then uh, maybe we can initiate our question answer already we can take uh, or let's say we will we can take questions from the students uh, uh before the session and we can discuss that in detail so rest assured we'll be having multiple such rounds not only with electronics so as professor rigant is working closely with other departments in iit kharagpur and uh, we are trying to initiate a process where we will try and educate you as much as you, as we can before you take a call uh you know of of let's say choosing a career so that you are well informed you know what all fields are there so one takeaway is there you cannot evade mathematics if you want to get into engineering uh, you know and and that too throughout your career so you have to have a good uh, mathematical uh, skill so whatever we do back at our end where we are trying to improve the mathematical level or you know mathematical uh, uh, competency of all of you that's very very important so that is going to play big time when you enter a college and then to the career in 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 such fields so with those words i will uh, again wish that everybody stay safe and i hope you learned something uh, from professor mrigang and uh, moinak thanks moinak for uh, being on the panel we will invite you once again maybe uh, some more of your team members can come uh, just for a quick uh, informal chit chat with our people because lots of our students are aspiring to get into iits they are very aspirants so maybe your version of story will uh, you know will will connect with them uh, uh, much so yeah, uh, yeah. Big, because we are some old yeah. lots so yeah, yeah. so <laughs> is version is not more recent and relevant to the current you know yes. so what we'll do is we'll again uh, you know i will invite you all and uh, maybe few more of your friends who can come and uh, do a virtual tour of iit kharagpur maybe if you because i i don't know whether you are there in the campus right now you, are, you must be at home yeah. but somehow you know you can uh, show them around so this with these words and uh, uh 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 we will definitely come back and uh, you know conduct one more session on this because it's a very vast field and uh, so is the intention so we will be taking up another engineering streams as well because i have faced it all of our students all of our colleagues and uh, you know uh, uh, students previous students have faced it it becomes very difficult to take a call when you get a rank and now you have to decide which stream to pick up so hence these information these sessions are going to help you all so stay connected even if at times it might appear to be boring but you never know which information is useful to you tomorrow let's say you land up in a situation where you need such information that it becomes handy so with those words i will thank uh, uh, mainak and uh, especially professor migam sharad for uh, sparing time and uh, you know he, these people are running the show again uh, from remote uh, location so iit system is on so with uh, you know i really thank all of you to be there and and uh, just to uh, you know he 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 is in a place where lots of such cases are there around him with all those constraints also he took out his time and came over and uh, you know uh, enlightened our student with for those uh, for these uh, you know uh, uh, things i will i will i will extend my heartfelt gratitude to you thanks again and let's meet once again to help these kids uh, decide on many other aspects as well thank you thank you so much thanks a lot for this opportunity it was a really pleasure interacting with all the students lot of nice questions and uh, i'm always uh, willing to connect more and uh, you know share uh more information with the students so looking forward to building a good platform good counseling platform for uh, the students yeah yeah with those words thanks a lot thanks again moina thanks uh, mrigant uh, and uh, all the parents and students stay safe we'll meet again and uh, we are planning another one on aerospace soon we'll in, in, inform you uh, very soon so uh, uh, let's meet once again okay bye bye take care good night